Good day. <clears throat> Today, um, I am giving this lecture um, as I'm not feeling real well, so I'm actually going to be giving it, this is my low-tech version. Um, it won't be exactly as great as the uh, Zoom version, but I'm not sure the Zoom will work at my home because I have such really poor internet here, even though I pay a lot of money for it. Um, I'm uh, getting ready to, as soon as I finish this and post this, I'll be I mean, go to the clinic. I, like I said, I've got sore throat and feeling kind of like I might have strep and a little bit of a headache. So um, I hope that you're all well and I'm um, going to go forward with this uh, PowerPoint on political <coughs> politics and policy, political action, advocacy, and activism. Learning objectives today will be to differ differentiate, so you're going to need to know the definitions. Uh, for political action, advocacy, and activism. Number two, you need to discuss the differences of policy and types of policies, including public policy. That includes, you know, the entire public, whatever that area is, whether it's at the local level, state level, or the federal level. Institutional, which means facilities or organizations. Um, health policies, so that can be at all different levels, and nursing Describe the difference between a professional lobbyist and a citizen activist and how to identify, or excuse me, identify three politically active nurses of the 1800s. I chose um, three of my favorites. Um, discuss political actions uh, individuals can take and uh, explain why a 501c3 or not-for-profit organization such as the American Nurses Association or the ANA or the Indiana State Nurses Association, ISNA, can utilize a political action committee or a PAC. And lastly, list three uh, ways a nurse can become politically active. Okay. Oh, program outcomes. Okay, program outcomes are the same. Okay, definitions. If you see the picture up here, I'm actually going to zoom in on it. Uh, that picture is an oldie but goldie. Um, if you look at it, you can see that's actually where my community came out. And um, there were grandmas and little kids and, um, you know, every, all age groups. Greenpeace came to our town of 250 people. So political action is uh, the definition of political action. It's an action <clears throat> designed to attain a purpose by the use of political power uh, or by political activity and political channels, okay? So political action. Political action can be driven by um, anyone from committee members in, in a political scene. It can be driven by uh, an individual, a group of individuals, um, businesses, anyone. Um, activism. It's defined as a doctrine or practice that emphasizes direct, vigorous action, <coughs> excuse me, or especially in support or opposition to one side of a controversial issue. So if you're an activist, typically you're involved in something that's controversial. Um, advocacy, the act of, uh, the act or process of supporting a cause or proposal, um, or the act of uh, advocating for something. And also, uh, additionally, there's a second, is actively supporting a right and good cause, supporting or speaking uh, the, for themselves or speaking on behalf of others who cannot speak for themselves or basically other, you can be de delegated uh, to speak on behalf of other people. Advocacy is ultimately carried through consent um, from the person themselves. So advocacy is very important as nurses. We will always be advocates. That's one of the uh, charges we have as nurses. So know all three of those definitions. If you want to take a picture of this slide on your, um, you can pull up the PowerPoint, take a picture of it. Uh, definitely you're going to need to know the definitions So and practice. Uh, additional definitions, policy. It's a course of action followed by a government, business, or institutional to institution, excuse me, to obtain a desired effect. It's based on values and is a first step in forming policy. Um, <clears throat> when policy is formed, excuse me, the first step of forming policy is you have to identify your issue. What, and you have to try to get it down to a, what, get it fairly simple, let's put it that way. Public policy, now these are, pre, are standards 
precepts is another word, and standards uh, formed by governmental bodies. Legislative is uh, the legislature, whether it's at the federal or the state level. It's usually the House of Representatives and the Senate. Executive means the president, or if it's a state, it'd be the governor. Uh, judicial, it would be the Supreme Court, or it would be the state you live in, Supreme Court. Those are, uh, And those are issues that are a fundamental concern to the state and the whole of the general public or the nation, depending upon. Um, and that state can be used interchangeably there. So it would be nas uh, the nation or the state or territory. Institutional policy, we uh, is it governs work sites and identifies institutions, goals, operation, and treatment. Institutional, organizational, or systems level policy are procedures and governing statements that establish parameters and influence direct nursing practice in its environment. That is a definition by the American Nurses Association and how they define it as it regards to, uh, in regards to nursing. Okay, so next slide. Um, health policy is a statement regarding a goal of health care and a plan for achieving that goal. Um, there are a lot of different health policies. Like I said, they can be uh, anything from local, and we've seen a lot of that in public health right now, uh, for mask mandates. Um, you know, different, it can even go down to the school corporation, which would be a system or a, um, it could, uh, most of the time, you know, school corporation has more than one, uh, one uh, school, so it's usually a system. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, regarding a health care goal and a plan for achieving that goal. Uh, nursing policy specifies specific nursing leadership that influences and shapes health policy and nursing practice. So nursing practice can uh, definitely, our standards of care would be considered in those items. Okay, so next slide. Lobbying uh, and lobbyists. Lobbying is a form of advocacy. A citizen activist, there are two different types of advocates. Citizen activist and a professional lobbyist. So a citizen activist, the biggest difference is unpaid. Um, <clears throat> professional lobbyist uh, is a paid position, and there are over 12,000 registered in United States congressional uh, district districts as lobbyists at the federal level. There are uh, many times there are lobbyists at the state level as well. <clears throat> Early nursing history, politically active nurses, I've chosen these three. I just put... Uh, the time frame since Florence Nightingale was considered the founder of modern nursing, um, <clears throat> I placed her uh, first uh, in my list. Uh, Sojourner Truth, very, very important contribution. We'll talk about her and Clara Barton as well. So you can see their timelines and how long they lived. Interestingly, um, uh, Two of the three, I'm not absolutely certain on Sojourner Truth, but I know Florence Nightingale or Claire Burton were neither ever married nor had children. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Florence Nightingale was, <clears throat> excuse me, was a nurse activist, and she exhibited a lot of pressure on the British government, especially with sanitation uh, practices. Um, she advocated to establish a first nurse corps, and if you remember the video we watched, she and her band of nurses went to Crimea uh, during the war in Crimea uh, in the 1800s, and they uh, more people died from infections than died actually from battle wounds. So she and her nurses cleaned up uh, not only the, the uh, areas where they were cared for, but also clean bedding, good food, clean water, those are all Florence Nightingale's standards, and if you read her notes on nursing, that she establishes all those. Um, also, she understood the value of data influencing policy. In our previous lecture, we talked about the uh, ROSE. Um, actually, it was a, two lectures ago. We talked about the ROSE diagram that she created. And Florence Nightingale um, was never married, and her because her actually that was against her parents' will. They wanted her to be married and have children. And instead, she spent a life of serving um, nursing and improving nursing um, throughout the the uh, United Kingdom and and various parts of the world. Sojourner's <clears throat> Sojourner Truth, she was a former slave <clears throat> turned activist to abolish slavery. She was also the first woman 
to actually uh, obtain her freedom through the courts uh, from, from being a slave. Uh, so she actually um, um, was able to be successful at that. She advocated for human and women's rights and for the right to vote. Women didn't have the right to vote until 1922, and blacks did not have the... <clears throat> she advocated for the right to vote for blacks. And it is interesting, though, uh, to think about women didn't have the right to vote until 1922. Lobbied, uh, also so Sojourner Truth, lobbied for funds to educate nurses and physicians. Um, she was enslaved by a family. How she became a nurse was she actually... Um, the family that she worked slash was enslaved by, um, they very much cared for Sojourna and wanted her to become their nurse. So she learned nursing skills during the time she was a slave. Clara Barton organized the uh, relief efforts during the U.S. Civil War. She ad advocated for Congress to ratify the Treaty of Geneva, which allowed the Red Cross to perform humanitarian efforts in times of peace. And she formed the uh, <clears throat> American Red Cross, dedicated her life to the service, and she never married nor had children. So, different methods that you can <clears throat> use political action. Educate yourself. Know your elected officials. Know what their roles are and their political positions. Do they support an issue? Are they sitting on the fence? Do, they need, do you need to advocate for that issue? Research the issues and make sure they're evidence-based uh, all your resources are evidence-based. Next, communicate. Communication is is critical. Call or write. Call, write, or email your um, elected officials. Um, writing them via email or um, snail mail, it they actually can refer back. And and even though a call could be really impactful, uh, and a follow-up email is great because uh, they hear that twice. It tends to be something that will stick with them. Uh, participate. You can join professional organizations such as the ISNA and ANA. Even if a student, you can join the in Indiana State University Student Nurses Association and automatically become a member of the ISNA and ANA and, and to get all the student benefits. Um, attend events such as political forums like town halls or Cracker Barrel sessions where you make your position known on issues. And most importantly, register to vote and maintain current registration to vote. And vote. <laughs> Political actions uh, organizations. So what's a PAC? A PAC is an organization who raises funds <coughs> for campaign contributions. Particularly in nursing, they look at, versus looking at politics, they look at uh, position on issues. Uh, political action committees are formed by corporations. They're an offshoot of a corporation. They're not part of it. It's separate. Uh, you have to... Uh, most organizations, such as ISNA and ANA, are not-for-profit. Not-for-profit organizations are prohibited from lobbying or contributing to um, a political specific political candidate or donating money. A separate PAC has to totally uh, operate outside the parameters of these organizations. Okay, how a federal bill becomes law. I'm going to allow you to read this on your own. This actually won't be part of the uh, uh, test at this point in time. Um, and uh, it's, this is just good to know. And this is uh, how it becomes law at the, the uh, federal level. Or, excuse me, Indiana level. That was, excuse me, let me go back to that. This is the Indiana, Indiana level. And this is a federal process. Very similar just different nomenclature and names. Here's how to contact your federal and or state legislators. Those are the links for you. And you'll need to do that during your advocacy letter. Lastly, communicating with your legislators. We talked a little bit about that by letter. It's easy. Um, it's convenient. It's the most common way. Provides the legislator with something to actually refer to. And it can be impactful. You want to keep it to a page or under. Um, and uh, lawmakers do count how many phone calls and letters they receive. By phone, you can contact them by phone. And it can be used if you don't have time to construct a letter. Um, you can even leave a voicemail. They're a little bit more personal sometimes. And lawmakers will um, may or may not have time to respond to you via phone. 
do your homework before you make a call. Make sure you have a good outline, and um, that way your point will come across. So how can nurses become politically active? We can be change agents. We can join a coalition. We can be a lobbyist, either personally or professionally. <coughs> Excuse me. We can support political action committees. In campaigning, we can campaign. We have to make sure we're clear on what that we're doing this personally versus our uh, for our workplace. In voting strength, we vote with our block of nurses. In public office. So I leave you with this thought. A uh, quote from Mother Teresa. And I so love I so love Mother Teresa and I love what she uh, some of her quotes are wonderful. And this is that that although she can cast a stone and she throws basically throwing out an idea or a thought and many ripples, and it may be that her thought itself did not change things, but the people that it communicated to, um, maybe those people were able to make a difference. Um, in class activity. Um, I will direct you online uh, how to do this. There will be three questions. So you'll have a little, um, uh, this will be your to-do lesson for, for today for class. And like I said, I'll put that the instructions in the announcement. References, and we're done. Thank you for listening to my PowerPoint. Everyone have a good day. Sorry to have to call cancel class, but I'm just not feeling well enough to stand up and talk before you. It's all I can do to do this. And hopefully I can, <clears throat> hopefully they're going to get me some meds or, you know, rest or something will help. So have a good day. Um, thank you for coming to virtual class. Bye now.